All right, and now we're heading downstairs. Uh, first, we see some posters here. Here's a Rosani poster. Very cool. Salerno. Chicavalli. Adonis. Here's a cartoon of Bobby May that was made by Gildova. Here's a uh, one of a kind poster of Eva Vita, which she signed to me, which is really cool. <coughs> Salerno. Salerno. Here's a painting of, uh, I believe it's supposed to be Chris Cremo, perhaps, but a big montage of Harry Lind, Bobby May poster, and uh, a Bobby May corner, a Bobby May kind of tribute made by Gildova, which is very cool. And so now we enter the <coughs> the downstairs room, which is not nearly as well known as the upstairs, but it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, including uh, the archives. Here we have uh, 100 uh, photo albums filled with about 13,000 photos. All in here, and there's more in here. Um, I've also got about 300 posters in a big stack down here. Uh, which uh, pretty much no one has seen. And we've got an Adonis, a signed Adonis poster, and a uh, Francis Brunn cartoon that was made by Gildova when Francis was uh, uh, going to have surgery. It says, Mr. Brunn, the doctors are at a very delicate part of this operation. Would you please hold still for a moment? So that's really cool. And uh, <clears throat> here we've got, oh, by the way, I should say that these are the non-performer props. So this is more or less uh, looking at prop making and, uh, and that sort of thing, rather than having these props assigned to particular performers. Uh, we're looking mainly at the prop makers uh, at this point. And so we've got a, very rare Harry Lind devil stick up there with uh, the hand sticks. We've got some balls here. We've got the very first set of G balls ever made. We've got some Fergie bags. We've got a Fakini silicone ball. It's the first silicone ball uh, that was ever made for juggling or ever made. Extra balls. Uh, and we've got some traditional Japanese otadama, which were given to me by a little old lady after I after one of my performances in Japan. I've got a collection of uh, little juggling figures and things of that sort. A little guy here. And I've got a collection of miniature clubs and plates and puzzles and Rastelli puzzles and the Rastelli puzzle Rastelli watch and so we've got a lot of really cool things here and down there we have more photo albums and we've got <coughs> random things like this this is a uh, painting by Sergei Ignatov. So that's pretty cool. All right. We'll get back to that in a moment. Let's start with Edward Van Wyck. Um, Van Wyck was uh, one of the first prop makers. Uh, he was the first retail maker of clubs. And uh, <clears throat> so we've got some of his clubs here. Uh, this first one in the front right there is probably the oldest Van Wyck I've got. 
Uh, he started making clubs in 1895, made them until 1919. And so uh, that one is uh, probably the earliest of the clubs I have. Uh, but we've got various models here. Um, I've written in some of my articles and some of my books about how these various clubs were made, and so uh, I would highly recommend that you get that. Uh, uh, especially if you want to know about Van Wyck, uh, check out um, Juggling Props of History, Volume 1, uh, a book that I wrote. Uh, so we've got various clubs of his, including these miniature ones, which you can see there. We've got a mirrored one there, and uh, pretty cool. Uh, Van Wyck was uh, famous not for just making uh, you know, hollow wooden clubs, but uh, he kind of he introduced foil decorations to clubs. Uh, and so, uh, in his mind, that was his greatest invention. But here you can kind of see uh, how they were made. Uh, and the three sections, uh, one cup here, and one cup here, and then the handle. We have some other Van Wyck props. I've got three Van Wyck knives up here. Super, super rare. And a giant Van Wyck club up there as well. And I have one other Van Wyck prop, which is uh, uh, this mouth stick here. Um, we spend three plates on it. But uh, the sticks are new, but the mouse stick itself was made by Van Wyck. And after Van Wyck uh, uh, finished making clubs, he turned his club making part of his business over to Harry Lind. And so here we have some Lind clubs. We have uh, uh, different models. We've got standard. Uh, with a flat knob. We have a longer one, which is the Bobby May model with a flat knob. We've got a, a four-sided one there, mirrored. This is the only existing example I'm aware of of that mirrored club. We've got a, uh, and then we've got a standard round knob version. We've got a, uh, a hollow club here. This is probably hollow, hollowed out after the fact after it was purchased but it's a really cool club it makes the club super light and that was the I think the purpose of this was to teach uh, kids uh, uh, the juggling Jackson kids how to juggle and so they use these holy clubs if you will then we've got the eight-sided Harry Lynn club there with the different decorations um, Alongside these, we have two clubs, these two here on the, the right side. Those are uh, exhibition swinging clubs. They are not made for juggling because the walls of the clubs are not thick enough. But they are made for swinging uh, when people would exhibit, would uh, perform with club swinging all day to try and sell exercise clubs. They would have these hollow ones that they could do all day without getting too exhausted. And they were kind of the... Uh, the um, the forerunner of hollow juggling clubs, but uh, the juggling clubs have thicker walls. Uh, but uh, they're pretty cool, and the black one there is particularly cool because it was owned by Bobby May. So that's really nice. Uh, now, Harry Lynn made clubs from 1920 to about 1960, uh, but he had competitors. He had mainly a lot of copycats. And so here we have some of the copycat uh, clubs uh, going from left to right. Jack Miller and then uh, George Toll, um, Doc Crosby, uh, the Jackson Brothers, and then an unknown uh, one there. And then the last two there on the right are made by Arthur Mann. Uh, the, the, the white one with the horizontal stripes is um, a paper mache club. And then the one on the far right, the smaller one, is a uh, upholstered 
uh, club that is stuffed with horse hair. And so those are pretty cool. All right. Um, some other old clubs, another type of old club, are uh, skeleton clubs. And all of the clubs here on this shelf are skeleton clubs. And so you can see uh, kind of the way they were made. And uh, sometimes they're covered with uh, fabric or twine in this example, or even shrink wrap plastic in this example, or sometimes they were just left open. We've got models here from David Booth, uh, Unknown Makers. Um, Homer Stack made these right here. Uh, these two models were made by Harry Parker. And then we've got a Tau Vegas Club, which came out of Baltimore, Maryland area. And then we've got a 1950s Twine Skeleton Club. And so that was a uh, another type of club that was popular in uh, South America and Europe and uh, Russia. Um, as an alternative to uh, what the Americans were doing with uh, the hollow wooden clubs that Van Wyck and Lynn made. Um, another type of club that was popular were these wicker clubs, also known as rattan clubs, um, that these five right here were. Um, and these also sometimes known as basket clubs. And uh, these were an alternative, and they were used uh, both in the United States and in Europe. Um, in fact, John Breen, the first person to juggle seven clubs, uh, apparently used uh, some type of basket club like this. And so, they're very cool. Here we have a metal club with a wooden handle. I would not recommend that. <laughs> We have a, uh, a lighted club from the 60s, and we have a, a Russian-style club uh, that was actually used in Russia in the 80s. Um, here we have... <coughs> uh, first we have in the blue club there, that was a hollow plastic club from 1961. And you probably thought that uh, hollow plastic clubs didn't come out until the late 70s, but they actually tried it. Uh, we don't know them exactly all the details of the manufacturer, but it was in Europe. Uh, and uh, it was a hollow plastic club. It was actually too light, and so it never caught on. Uh, later on, uh, Dubé and Jugglebug in the late 70s made heavier hollow plastic clubs that uh, would not bounce out of your hand so easily, and they finally caught on. Uh, the second club is a wooden uh, uh, eight-sided club from uh, the UK. And then uh, these clubs are all plastic bowling pin clubs. Um, uh, this one right here uh, is a Carlo-style club. Carlo uh, was a uh, juggler and author who... Uh, uh, had a very famous book which, where he taught how to make these clubs using plastic to toy bowling pins. Uh, and so I have an example of that from the 60s or 70, early 70s. Uh, and then this next club right here, that's a Dave Madden club. Dave Madden was a juggler in the 1960s. He made these clubs. And it was that club that inspired this next club, which is very important. That is a Jay Green club from 1964 and it was the first club that had a uh, foam knob and a foam end and a squeezable handle and it's more or less the first modern club this club from 1964 is what inspired the clubs that uh, 90 percent of the jugglers use today and um, the next one is a european model of jay green and then uh, this last club was made by and used by Dan Sadoff, and it was more or less the same type of design, 
copying kind of what Jay Green had done. Down here we come to fiberglass clubs. Uh, there were three makers of fiberglass clubs. Uh, the most famous was Stu Reynolds, who started making them in 1969, and he was uh, he was a master at making them. He was a chemist at DuPont, and he uh, made small ones and big ones and thin ones and all types of. The ones that we had, uh, you might have seen in, a, uh, in part one, uh, a giant one uh, for Ken Binge that he made. But uh, so we've got six different models. The, the first, the three there along the side, and the first three uh, all the way up to this uh, bottle club there. And then we've got four clubs that were made by. Claude Crumley. These are all hollow fiberglass clubs. And uh, Claude made them in the second half of the 1970s. And then we have one example which is Ken Binge Club. And Ken was actually the first person to sell uh, hollow fiberglass clubs. They never caught on very much. Uh, and they weren't quite, they weren't as nice as Stu Reynolds. Uh, Stu's clubs had a perfectly round handle, but Claude Crumley clubs and Ken Ben's clubs um, never could get a perfectly round handle. They were a bit oval. And so that's one way you can tell the difference. But those were very cool. Very popular in the 70s and uh, 80s. First part of the 80s. And here we come to a uh, hodgepodge of clubs. Uh, on the left is a, an original uh, Dubay Club, uh, which was more or less a copy of uh, the Jay Green European there, uh, as far as sa same exact method of making it, uh, which you actually originally used a uh, a plastic toy bowling pin and a funnel uh, before the second club here, uh, which was the first Dubay Club with a molded body uh, made specifically for clubs. And this third club here is uh, one of the original clubs that was uh, modified to make a long-handled club. Uh, and uh, so that's very cool. And so that uh, a juggler modified that, sent it back to Brian Dubay, and Brian said, yeah, that would be good for passing some other things. So he started making uh, both short-handled and long-handled clubs. Next we have a Dubay Air Flight Club, which was the first hollow plastic club that had a, a varied thickness in the walls in order to fine-tune uh, the balance of the club. Then we have a, a Dubai American Club which debuted in 1976 and then we have two clubs uh, which were made by Gemini uh, Company. Uh, they're both hollow plastic clubs. Uh, they don't, might not look it but that's what they are. And then we've got a Dubay Cork Numbers Club, which is extremely rare. And that particular one was owned by Dick Franco. And then we've got a uh, Cabeza de Martillo Club, which has two handles on it. I believe that's from Chile. And then we're going to move over. Here we've got... Um, most of these on this shelf are foam clubs. Uh, the first two there on the left were made by Lee Letchworth and uh, the, the way as a teenager he uh, figured out a way of making these clubs using expanding foam and a wooden mold and he made some really nice clubs uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. And then we've got uh, a Reflection Soft Club, the yellow club there, which was made uh, very, uh, in 1991, very popular for a little bit with combat. Uh, and then we've got a Jungle Bug Prototype Rainbow Foam Club. And we have two clubs made by Scott Sorensen, the uh, Super Juggler Prototype Clubs. And then we've got a Horrible Ikea Foam Club. <laughs> and a Juggle Bug Kids Foam Club 
And then uh, on the end is not a foam club, it is a crocheted club made by Erica Couch Slesnig, specifically for the museum. And then we've got some other unique clubs here. We've got a Renegade Cuphead Club, Renegade Numbers Club, a Radical Fish Club, a Nikita Club, the purple one there, a Mr. Robotch Flash Club, a Freaks Unlimited Acrobat Club, uh, the one with the blue handle. That's the first club, uh, first uh, modern composite club uh, that did not have a wooden handle, but had a plastic handle. Now we're we're accustomed to uh, clubs that have alternatives to wood uh, as the um, the core of it, but uh, that was the first example. And then we've got a uh, numbers club that I made for doing uh, seven and eight clubs with. And then we've got two clubs made by Joe Cam. Uh, we've got uh, this laser cut uh, skeleton type club in the front, and behind it we have a porcelain club. It's a work of art. Uh, truly is. It's a wonderful uh, club, but you don't want to drop it because it would shatter. Uh, on the next shelf we have an original juggle bug club, uh, which uh, most people have never seen. This the white one there on the left. I have to maybe do a video about that uh, uh, specific club sometime because it has a funny story and it's a very interesting club. Then we've got a, a, a mini basic juggle bug club. We've got the basic juggle bug club. We've got a juggle bug kids club, a juggle bug Asian club from 1980. Only 600 of those were ever made. We've got a juggle bug Euro club, a juggle bug glow in the dark club, a juggle bug American club, and then a cane bounce club. It's a juggling club I made combining a hollow plastic club and a uh, half of a silicone ball and it uh, is made for bouncing. Um, here we have an unknown uh, cork club. Uh, cork clubs were another alternative uh, to hollow wood and wicker and uh, skeleton clubs. They would uh, stick a uh, a handle into a piece of cork and then would uh, lathe out that piece of cork to, for the body. And then we've got some rare, uh, two examples of rare Ricker clubs. Uh, the pink, one with the pink section there and the yellow club. And then we've got an, a hollow wooden club that's more modern. And then another hollow wooden club made by Philip Gross, a uh, weird red bulb club from the UK, uh, some unknown club from the 1950s, a 1960s wooden club, miniature wooden club that was used by uh, some clown in a circus, and then a John Jusslin uh, Russian style club there. Um, up top we have uh, some statues. We, uh, three of them are by uh, Josie. Uh, we've got someone, well you can see the three. The, one, the golden one is the IJA Founders uh, Award. Uh, it shows Art Jennings uh, with his giant clubs. Uh, that's on loan from the IJA archives, but the other three are part of my collection. They're pretty cool. Well, also I forgot. Uh, I've got this little collection here and this display that kind of show how Harry Lynn clubs uh, were made. But that might have to wait for another video. And now we have some juggling sets. We've got <coughs> Uh, the earliest juggling sets, uh, we have two that came out in 1949. We've, uh, the most famous is the Harry Mole set. Let me open that up. Came with six balls, very nice balls, and an instruction book. Uh, that's very good. 
And then the Floyd Brothers set, which came out in 69, is this one. And uh, I won't open it up, but it's got three uh, dense foam balls in it and some instructions. And then shortly after, in the early 50s, uh, the Harry Mall Professional set, which had larger, uh, six larger uh, white balls um, in it with instructions. And then we've got the You Can Learn to Juggle set, which came out in the 50s. And inside of it, let's see if I can get it open, were the first hollow plastic clubs ever and some hollow balls that are almost unusable and some plates, plastic juggling plates. That's very cool. Um, also, in the 1950s, we came out with the, the Jiffy Juggler set, which has three balls in it and instructions. And then in 1960, uh, Juggling Joe's Juggling Game. Uh, it's not really a game, it's just a juggling set uh, put out by the juggler uh, Toscanelli. Uh, 1960, and the uh, the eyes and the ball and the nose are balls that stick out through holes in the front. Um, we've got this Jongleur set, which I might do a whole video about sometime because it's really cool. It's got some uh, gimmicked gentleman juggler uh, tricks in it, which is very unique. Uh, we have Jay Green's juggling set, which has uh, rings, uh, cardboard rings in it, and spinning discs and like spinning plates but they're discs and some balls uh, and then we've got uh, this set from the 70s this set from the 80s which is actually the type of set I learned to juggle with and uh, some other sets and uh, so that's the end of this section and we will see you in part four